Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we are in the engineering main space for the Red Oak Victory, one of only three Victory ships left in the world. And um, we are right above the turbines that they are getting functioning again. So Red Oak Victory will join the other ships like American Victory, Lane Victory, Jeremiah O'Brien, and John W. Brown that are both uh, museum ships from the World War II time period that are also able to go out. The engineering spaces on a Victory ship are a drastic improvement over those on a Liberty ship. While the older Liberty ships were able to make about 2,500 shaft horsepower, a Victory ship can make 6,000. This more than doubles their speed to up to about 16 knots on a ship like Red Oak Victory. And this is all part of an arms race going on between German U-boats and the American convoy systems. Early in the war, the United States is putting out Liberty ships as fast as possible. And during the Battle of the Atlantic, the Germans are sinking them as fast as they can. So Liberty ships are really designed to go out there, make seven knots across the Atlantic. And uh, if, if they deliver one cargo, well, then they've earned their value back. But German U-boats were becoming faster, larger, more powerful. And so the United States, as they were building up their facilities and able to produce more technology, um, were able to improve the engineering spaces and go from the old, cheap, and standard triple expansion steam engines to more modern steam turbines for ships like this on roughly a similar size scale. Victory ships are a little bit larger than the earlier Liberty ships, but with their speed, they can outrun submarines. And they do this by using the same steam turbine system here that Battleship New Jersey uses, just on a slightly different scale. Remember, 6,000 shaft horsepower versus 212,000 for an Iowa-class battleship, a significantly heavier ship designed to operate at significantly higher speeds. One of the most striking things for me coming from Battleship New Jersey uh, to Red Oak Victory here is that it's maybe a different scale, but uh, very similar equipment. I'm able to recognize the pieces going around the space. Obviously, we've got the uh, ship's boilers here on either side of me, and they are Babcox and Wilcox boilers uh, feeding into Westinghouse turbines, just like Battleship New Jersey has. Now, whereas Battleship New Jersey has nine burners per boiler, you've only got three here on a Victory ship. Uh, you're just not needing to go at the same speed. Uh, and these ships are significantly more fuel efficient. Much like Battleship New Jersey, they're used to, uh, they're designed to use Bunker C fuel. So very little refinement of the fuel, you can basically pump it out of the ground, uh, strain it, and then run it through the boilers. The fuel pumps have strainers, uh, both cold strainers on this end and then hot strainers on this end, as the fuel is going through before it gets into the boiler so that it's a little bit uh, more pure by the time your burner nozzles are spraying it into the fire. These boilers have uh, recently been gotten working again after 50 years being cold and mothballed and um, unrestored. So that was a big step for the ship's uh, chief engineer, Greg Velasquez, who recently won the Historic Naval Ships uh, Restoration Award for his work in firing up these boilers. So that is the first step in getting the ship operating again. Now be sure to check out the video linked in the description below that Road Oak Victory produced when they lit off their boilers for the first time to see how that process worked. So just like on Battleship New Jersey, the steam from the boilers comes into the turbines. Uh, the turbines are spinning faster than you want the propellers to spin. And so you've got a gear reduction box to step it down. From here, we will go on to Shaft Alley in a minute. But first, let's segue and look, what, look at what the inside of one of these turbines looks like. So now we are in hold number five, the lower hold number five on Red Oak Victory and uh, they happen to have a spare low pressure set of turbine blading down here. Uh, and this space is cool because we are not allowed to film 
inside USS Charleston where all the Iowa spare parts are, or all the Iowa class spare parts are, but it is a space very similar to this one. Uh, they're spread out among uh, three separate hold levels. Um, Red Oak Victory was able to participate in something like that because all the Victory ship spare parts were in Pan Am Victory and they were able to strip many of those parts out, such as the spare um, low pressure turbine blading, which they can now use to replace theirs if they ever damage it. Because uh, it's not like you're gonna be able to make a new one of these or, or repair it. Uh, I hope that they get this up in one of their exhibit spaces at some point so that visitors can see it. But here you can see the, uh, the blading here. Steam would enter from this side and it would spin the blading, spin this whole shaft uh, if you are going ahead. And you can see as the steam is expanding, your blades are getting bigger along the way. And that's why the low pressure turbine is always so much larger than the high pressure turbine where it's coming in at a much uh, higher pressure. On the other side of this, you'll notice that they step down again. These are the reverse blades. So they're oriented in the opposite direction. If you're going reverse, the steam would come in backwards and spin this in the other direction, which would then spin the propeller shaft, sh bleh, which would then spin the propeller shaft in the opposite direction. And so the ship can go in reverse. This is just about exactly what an Iowa class battleships um, blading would look like just on a slightly different scale. Uh, just like Red Oak Victory, Battleship New Jersey only has reverse blading on the low pressure turbine. So the high pressure turbine, you just get this section, although a little bit smaller. And then the low pressure, you get both a head and a stern blading. One of the universals of engine rooms is the high temperature that they can get up to, especially when operating in the South Pacific where the water temperatures are up to 80 degrees, you're getting no cooling relief at all. So it's very common for engineering main spaces to have wide open spaces so that the heat can rise up out of them. Just like on New Jersey, you've got uh, air ducts that can move force draft ventilation. Victory ships have uh, big scoops that can suck air down into the space as they're moving. But in the absence of air conditioning, there's one other thing that they do in the engine rooms for heat relief. So you're down here for a four hour shift. You're just sweating your brains out during a uh, four hour shift in 120 degree temperature. So you've got a water fountain. The problem is you're sweating all of this salt out of your body and you're only getting water back in. So there are salt tablet dispensers. Uh, this is your early version of Gatorade to get those electrolytes back into your system that you are sweating out uh, so that you don't pass out from the heat. So now we are in the very lowest part of the ship. You can see the bilges down below us. Something that caught me is this ship actually has lighting in the bilges to go down there and do maintenance. Uh, I'm not sure that Battleship New Jersey has anything like that. Down here, we're at the auxiliary condensers for the uh, turbo generators up above. It, these are striking because it appears that they're just made out of regular steel, no precious metals. Uh, this is a mass produced ship. Remember, she's one of 747 ships built right here in Richmond, California. She's the last of them actually, but uh, she's one of 747 built here at uh, the Kaiser Yards in Richmond, California. She's only designed the last length of the war and not necessarily even that if U-boats have anything to say about it. So uh, it's just a steel condenser. It's not any of the precious metals that you would use on a gold plater like an Iowa class battleship where you'd see manganese bronze and, and other uh, high value alloys used extensively for these ships that are supposed to last 20 years or more. So uh, from the condensers, you can see we've got the reduction boxes behind us. And from here, we've got access to the shaft alley. On Battleship New Jersey, the shafts run most of their length to the other engineering main spaces. A Victory ship only has the two boilers and one turbine unit. They're, that is all in one single engineering main space. 
The shaft runs through this long shaft alley underneath the aft two cargo holds and the aft uh, gun position before it passes through the gland seal at the aft end of this space. Uh, so while many of the things that we've looked at in this tour are smaller than on Battleship New Jersey, look at all this room we've got in this shaft alley. I can stand up straight. There's light. I can uh, reach out a full curator wingspan or uh, six feet or two meters for those of you who haven't been to the moon yet. Um, so th there's just a lot of room in this shaft alley. Much like Isle class battleships, Victory ships took the earlier design of the Liberty ships and modified it for speed. Double the speed of the previous ship in their case, which is more than the Iowa's got over the Sodaks. Uh, however, they still only have the one centerline propeller shaft here. If you would like to see this propeller shaft spinning again, there is a link in the description below to donate to Red Oak Victory so that they can continue their restoration projects. Like I said, they've gotten their boilers fired up, but they haven't started attempting to spin their turbines yet. So that is something that over the near future they are going to be working on. So my question for you today is, have you ever gotten to ride a historic ship? Let us know in the comment section down below. I got to sail on John W. Brown in Baltimore. Uh, that would have probably, man, I was, I was still in high school. It was probably uh, 2000 and 2004-ish, 2005-ish maybe. But uh, let, me, let me hear your stories about sailing on a museum ship in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. You should consider donating to support Red Oak Victory and the ongoing preservation work they're doing here in Richmond, California. To support them, there's a link in the description below. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our museum. Thanks for watching.